So today I wanted to talk to you about sourcing fiber for uh, for crackers and for in this case I need it to add a bunch of feathering material. So <clears throat> this is a sixteen hundred pound Kevlar rope and. It was acquired as new old stock. I've had it for several years. It's kind of a lifetime supply for crackers. And I'm going to spool off like six or eight feet of it. And I'm going to tie a knot because this is a very loose lay rope. So it's four millimeters, 1600 pound Kevlar. Uh, I acquired this on eBay for $120, like four years ago or so, maybe five. <clears throat> Whenever you're cutting Kevlar, I recommend you have a pair of scissors that you mark because it will destroy the scissors over time. And I've marked these as my Kevlar cutting scissors. You kind of have to chew your way through the Kevlar. And I'm going to tie up a end of this rope. separate the fibers so this is a kind of a dull fid it's a tent stake it's titanium don't remember where I picked this up but it's really handy for doing rope splices and separating fiber bundles. Okay. So it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five sets of yarns in this rope. And so way up at the top you insert your fid you can Work on separating your bundles of fibers. And I find six or seven feet is about the amount you can undo before it starts snarling up easily. And you can start at the end and work down. I'm just okay. with six or seven feet. You usually can untwist the lay of the fibers.
then each of these five mm -hmm. contain five yard yarn bundles. There's a total of five yarn bundles in each of these five. So you'll end up with 25 bundles of thin yarn. But then I recommend as you peel the rope into yarns, that down on the end, once you get the fibers to separate you tie an overhand knot or a couple overhand knots or a double overhand knot or a figure eight knot which will keep that bundle together on one end so I'm going to do that like five times People ask me how I do some of the stuff I do. Well, I discovered that this made really great cracker material for fire whips and for regular whips. And I started using five or six feet of it to spin crackers and double them twice out of one or two strands of this material. So once you tie a knot in a bundle of five fibers, again, use your marked scissors that you're using for cutting Kevlar. And you can bundle this up as a little burrito package. And you can take some of the spin out of it. And each of the yarns, there's five yarns in this, in this uh, yarn bundle. Each of those has thousands and thousands of Kevlar fibers. And they're really fine. There's fineness, finer than silk. But for ex, for expediting what we're doing, if you burrito these up and set them aside, you can work with just one bundle of fibers at a time, which I find makes the process a little bit faster. And there's lots of ways to bundle up little packets or packages. This just happens to be a quick way to quick time. You're basically forming a half hitch. And it's enough to keep it bundled together. It's a little bit like hair. You can end up tangling the hair. <clears throat> so, but much like combing hair, use your fingers to separate and let the fibers spin themselves out.
<clears throat> likes this video, it's, uh, want more details on how I do some of the bundling I do with stuff, feel free to shout out, ask questions, tell me what you're interested in seeing. same thing goes here. If you spin this one way, you'll see the fibers will come apart into fiber bundles. The other way, it just gets tighter. And so, you start at this end of a fiber bundle, you separate one out, you work it up, and unspin it. You want to be careful you don't cobweb the strands because then it gets kind of more tangly. Okay, I've got three in my right hand and two in my left. And you just <clears throat> but the more you rake your fingers through the material the bundles will separate. And they have to be left free on one end to twist and that way you don't end up with a tangled mess. That's why you start from the end that <clears throat> is loose typically. People ask me why I do this. Well, I bought this whole thing for a hundred bucks. And if I buy a Kevlar yarn, it'll run me 80 bucks for half a pound of it. This is several pounds. Um, and you can do that. I mean, it's a whole lot easier than separating the fibers, but if you're already a breeder, you probably already have plenty of patience. And it's really not that big of a deal to spend a little bit of time separating fiber bundles to achieve what you want. And when it starts snarling up, just pluck out one strand. And this material is rather slick because it's Kevlar. So you can usually slick it back down. Depending on what you're doing with it, you can also add a touch of beeswax to it in this process. You know, if you're spinning crackers, just running it through a block of beeswax will give it a wax layer, which will help it help the fibers spin into thread if you're using it to sew. As you can kind of see the action here. People ask why I do it this way. It's just one way to do it. Like everything else I do, everybody has a different idea. This is the way that works for me. And 
separates the fibers nicely. And I've talked to spinning people who do a lot of spinning and they think it's really neat to have Kevlar fiber that's yellow. This is a pretty neat way to get 25 bundles of yarn that are each separated. We're finally getting up to where I place the knot up here. And you can either work it through all the way one direction or you can work it through on the other direction once you get to the knot. I like to just cut it off because it's faster to work with shorter pieces. In this case, I'm putting a counterclockwise twist because this is all clockwise twisted. And as I said, if you can avoid cobwebbing it too much, it'll help you avoid tangles and stuck bits. Sometimes it's not avoidable. slick the little places where they jam up and try and knot up you may lose a few tufts of fiber but that's because you cobwebbed it at some point So there's two of the fibers free. And again, you can burrito these things up. So this is a single yarn of the 25 yarns of rope. And you can spin a cracker out of this and you'll have a hand spun Kevlar yarn cracker. Lots of ways to spin crackers and lots of reasons you want different widths and different amounts of material. Uh, you can also spin this, which is six or seven feet, into a, into a heavy Kevlar thread. There is one yarn. Here's the other yarn we separated. The rougher your hands are, the more it'll try and catch in cobwebs. So, but if you're using this to add some extra wicking material to a fire whip, which is what I'm about to do with this, uh, you really want the natural Kevlar fiber, which is not a natural fiber, but just the plain Kevlar fibers a wick. It makes a pretty nice wick. And you don't really want the... You don't really want to add any wax or oil to it. You want it to be just the Kevlar fiber. <clears throat> and I agree it there's faster ways like you can just buy Kevlar yarn and take it off a spool but I don't have Kevlar yarn 
Okay, I have more room. And when you end up with a snarled up area, it'll work out okay. It's not like fishing line exactly. It's like trying to manage bundles of silk fiber. If you've ever spun silk crackers out of silk, natural silk fiber, instead of silk thread, you use the same process as you do with this Kevlar. And the Kevlar is actually, believe it or not, a little bit softer. I mean, this is so soft, it's ridiculous. And it catches on everything because it's just a yarn. It's not even spun into anything once you've un unspun it. But I'll show you what I mean. Take this bundle. Pull it out. And this one looks like a mess. Well, don't worry about it. It'll straighten itself out. It's just... You want to cause as, as little disruption to the material as you can, but... Sometimes it catches on your hands and you're going to end up with a bit of a snarl, but usually you can take that really cobwebby material and turn it back in with just a just stroking it through your fingers and letting it reseat. And you can tell this doesn't look like any different than the other bundles. This is the last one of the five that I separated out from one of the five of the pieces of rope. <clears throat> and you can actually just braid this if you were doing, uh, doing something where you wanted a really smooth appearance. You can actually just braid this material, although braided crackers take a long time to set and braid. <laughs> I suppose you could probably even braid a whole whip with it, although it would drive me nuts with all the trying to spider web on me. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And that is the same as what's in this one bundle. One of the reasons that I like to bundle it this way is you can just pay it out. So you go like this. And you can pay out the entire bundle all the way out to work on the next bundle. And if you change your mind, you can just bundle it up. But you can tell the difference in size. This, this strand is five of the little strands. And there's five of this strand in the original rope. And if I'm going to use it for sewing, like if I have a repair to do, I'll, I'll just wax up one of these and spin it down tighter if I need the really heavy thread. <coughs> Pardon the coughing, I've got a head cold. And so that's how to get bundles of yarn from at least this kind of loose lay 1600 pound Kevlar rope. 
<coughs> and they're all counter spun so they stay together or try to like rope is a spun product typically a lot like thread it's just a made of different bundles of fiber and this is kind of an extreme case <coughs> but I'd like to show you guys what I've come up with to do because I'm a big believer that <coughs> the knowledge that is hard earned when you're making whips and making different products so much of that gets lost when the person dies and none of us are going to be here forever so that's how I'm going to not bore you to death but that's how I separate out bundles of Kevlar fiber to make crackers if I want to make Kevlar crackers for smaller whips I'll use one of these and spin it into a cracker bigger whips I'll do two bundles or three bundles and spin three yarns into six yarns into twelve yarns or just three yarns into six yarns so I'm gonna stop the camera here I'll see about shooting some more interesting stuff. If you get a chance and like what I'm doing, please check us out at Pocket Snakes Whips on YouTube or Pocketsnakes.com or Pocket Snakes Whips with no space, just all one word, Pocket Snakes Whips on Instagram. Thank you for your support and enjoy your whip making.